Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petites and we are doing a geranium spotlight. Now, I don't want to con uh, confuse y'all, but just so you know, there's a perennial geranium, which is a true geranium outside in the perennial departments. But the geranium we're talking about today that everybody calls geranium is actually a pelargonium. Just blew your mind, didn't I? So actually we're talking about tender annual geraniums today. And we always wanna give you the best information so you are going to be successful at home. And you're gonna be amazed at how many different varieties of tender geraniums there are. So here we go. To start out with, geraniums love that full sun condition. They love six or more hours of direct sunlight on their foliage, on their flowers. That's where they're really gonna do best for you. Sure, you can put them in a part shade condition that four to six hours, they won't bloom as well. They still will perform. So they're pretty uh, tough little annual plants. So no worries there. The next thing that you wanna know is with your soil. They really do prefer a well-drained soil, amended soil. So if you're gonna plant them out in the landscape, make sure that it's kind of a raised up area and you're making sure that that uh, soil is draining for them. They cannot tolerate wet feet, okay? So just be aware, we all have clay soil around here. The more you can add organic mat matter or amendments, soil amendments into that soil, the better draining it's going to be. So check out your soil perfectors, check out any of your sweet peats, compost, all those good things that will always help when planting. Uh, the other thing is when you're planting in containers, no problem. You're just going to want to use a light potting mix, okay? And that really helps too uh, with geraniums, again, aiding that drainage. Now I'm going to tell you, for the most part, they like that sort of cool, moist uh, root system to slightly dry, okay? Um, but so mulching. So mulching is really important with these guys or planting other plants around them so they keep their roots cool. That's another good thing just to remember. Um, with watering geraniums, again, they can take it a little bit drier than some of your other annuals. So you do want to thoroughly water them. So we always talk about thoroughly watering their, their pots or containers that they're being grown in, making sure that you're thoroughly moistening the soil substrate and then letting it drain out from the bottom. And then you repeat. So you're making sure, again, you're thoroughly watering that soil, letting it drain out from the bottom. That's in container gardens. So hanging baskets, window boxes, your combination pots, all those good places. Out in the landscape, they really only need as much as some of your landscape plants. So we're looking about an inch of water. So one inch of water, one time per week, a nice, deep, thorough watering is best. If you get rainfall, that's okay. You need up to an inch. So let's say it rains half an inch, go ahead and irrigate another half inch. So you have that one inch for the whole week, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Food, as far as fertilization is concerned, you can use Osmocote, you can use Plant Tone and Iron Tone, whatever you prefer. You can use miracle Grow. Just stick to the package directions. Typically with Osmocote, we're applying it about once every six to eight weeks in a container garden because you're watering more often, so more fertilizer will move into the root system and obviously uh, leach out faster in a container than it would in the landscape. So just keep that in mind when you're using your fertilizers. Don't overdo it because when you overdo it, you can cause some problems for the plant material in the long run, okay? Um, the next thing, as far as geraniums are concerned, again, like I mentioned, they're really tough plants out there. I'm going to tell you probably the heaviest maintenance that you'll have to do on geraniums is deadhead them, okay? And when I talk about deadheading, you're actually taking the spent flower cluster and you're actually going down the stem and then removing the stem right at the node, okay? So you're removing this whole thing. Sorry, it wasn't quite spent yet, but we can put this in a little vase and use it as a cut flower. But that's what happens. So you're looking at the entire spent umble flower, okay? And then go all the way down the stem. And then you can just 
pop it right off. They pinch really, really easily at the node. So you're removing these every time you go through and deadhead. Now, we have a lot of varieties of geranium, so I'm gonna explain that. Some of the newest varieties are called self-cleaning, and that means that when the flowers kind of fall off, they shed clean, so you don't really see the stem. So I'm gonna show you that in just a bit. But that's really the highest maintenance that this plant requires. So that's really, really great. The more you pinch the stems, the more you deadhead, the better this plant is going to continue to bloom and bush out for you. So that's really good too. If the foliage gets leggy for whatever reason, or maybe gets damaged or frosted or something happens to it, don't be afraid to cut it back. These plants will continue to fill out and bush out for you and just be nice and lush. So they really are fairly low maintenance. You just have to do some deadheading every once in a while. Okay, as far as attributes, I explained that these plants are really tough. They can take the sun, they can take the heat, they can take a little bit of drought, okay? Um, again, sometimes drier conditions than some other annuals then, but just keep an eye on it. They are pollinator attractive, their foliage, has very strong fragrance to it. It could be a good fragrance or a bad fragrance. So it just kind of depends um, if you like it or not. But geranium essential oils are, are available out there because they're so strong. And actually they can help with stress, reducing stress and depression. So that's why you see geranium oils available out in the markets. Um, they have lush foliage and their foliage can change. Some of them are striped, some of them are clean green, some of them are leathery and succulent, some of them are fuzzy or pubescent. So again, there's lots of different foliage types with geranium. So if you enjoy different textures and different foliage colors, um, that's good. That means you've been listening to me too, because I always talk about foliage color and texture is very important out there in the garden. So geraniums can do that. And of course, they fit the bill as far as rainbow of colors. And these colors are so vivid and vibrant. I think that's why we use geraniums so much in the landscape is they just really wow the onlooker and look absolutely gorgeous throughout the garden. Okay. Oh, and again, cut flowers. So don't be afraid to use them as cut flowers. If you need a little bit of color in your bud vases or what have you, no problem. They don't last forever, maybe three to five days, but they'll still work. Okay. Um, so do try to use them as a cut flower too. That's always good. Geraniums are also great fillers and sp Fillers, okay? You could make them a thriller. Some of them are a little bit taller than others. Um, but again, I think filling out a container garden and then of course your ivies really do spill very, very nicely. So they do make those great, great plants. Um, watch for, usually you'll see geraniums kind of with vines. So this is a really good companion plant. Um, this is actually your uh, moneywort, golden moneywort or lismachia. And it works as a nice trailing vine uh, with them. But you see uh, vinca vine planted with these geraniums. You see silver falls dichondra planted with geraniums. So they look lovely with vining plants trailing over the side. Um, some of the bushy types, of course, look wonderful. And then and we also find some of the more delicate plants like this white euphorbia are really, really great because they fill in kind of the, the spaces, those dark spaces in between the stems on the geraniums. So we'll use euphorbia, we'll use bacopa, um, we can use scavola as well to kind of fill in around. But again, any of your heat lovers, your petunias, your lantana, um, those will always work as good companions with geraniums and really do nicely. Okay, now I've got five different species here that I wanna show you just so you know the difference between all of these pelargoniums or annual geraniums. Number one, and you usually see this early in the season, this is a regal geranium. Sometimes they're called Martha Washington geranium, so you might have heard that other name. Regal geraniums are pelargonium grandiflorum. They do have kind of this um, unique large flower. It's a single flower, again, produced in, in small umbels. Um, and it's usually about five petals, okay? These geraniums are really aromatic. So their foliage is fuzzy. 
Um, very, very fragrant. And the flowers, again, multicolors. But you see them in spring because they are a little bit more of a cooler um, weather conditions. Not frost, but in the 45 degrees or above, you'll start to see them really, really pop. And I like to grow these in eastern or northern exposure because they really can't tolerate too much heat like some of the other geraniums that we're familiar with. So look for the regal geraniums. They're really a beautiful small geranium, usually about 12 to 14 inches tall and wide, not much larger than that. Okay, the next geranium that I wanna show, and you are probably familiar with this, this is our citronella geranium. So scented geraniums are part of this annual geranium family, okay? Scented geraniums are pelargonium gravelins, and there's lots of different scented geraniums out there. Um, there's rose scented, there's nutmeg scented, there's uh, mint scented, all different kinds, okay? The one that we grow here at Petites is the citronella scent because it has been the most popular for years and years and years. These leaves, you can tell, are very, very cut, finely cut, um, comparatively to some of the other geraniums out there. Very attractive, and oh my gosh, you brush your hands over this, and you get that kind of a lemony, citrusy, um, citronella, again, smell. It does release. It is a good mosquito repellent out there. Place this on your patio, wherever you like to spend time. Go out there and pet the plant, woo! And just let that fragrance release. It is really strong. Taylor is smelling it right now, and she's, I don't know, five feet away from me. So again, very, very strong plants. Look for these plants. They definitely do a nice job for us. Believe it or not, your scented geranium foliage and also their flowers. Their flowers are usually very small. The flowers are considered to be a gourmet edible plant. So foliage and flowering for the, the scented geraniums um, are really nice, just beautiful decorations and so forth um, for edibles and um, do really nicely for us. Okay, now next one that you know is ivy geraniums. Okay, so your ivy geranium is going to be your vining type typically the branches on these plants typically hang down much longer than some of your other geraniums that tend to be more bushy, okay? What's also neat about your ivy geraniums is that, and it's also pelargonium peltatum, is that their foliage is really kind of succulent-like, sort of leathery, uh, smooth, but thick. So because they have this succulent foliage, they're able to tolerate a lot more heat and drought than some of the other geraniums out there. So just be aware if you have really hot areas that you wanna put these plants, try the ivy geranium types. And again, so many different colors. This is actually a double blooming type. So um, when Taylor shows you the picture there, you can just barely see the center of it. There's semi doubles, there's also single flowers, and that goes with a lot of the geranium families. So it just kind of depends what you prefer. But again, the ivies will grow very, very well in those really hot areas, okay? Now, I wanna show you just a normal zonal geranium, and you're probably familiar with it. I'm gonna show you this orange one, okay? So zonal geraniums are the geraniums that come from either seed or cuttings, okay? So you will see zonal geraniums come in two ways. The seed types are usually very compact, very small, uh, I shouldn't say very small, they bloom smaller, but they're very, very prolific plants, so they grow very well for us. The cutting types usually have a much larger flowering head, like this one does. Um, typically, you'll see about three inches across, maybe to four inches with the cutting types. The seed types usually have like a two inch wide umbel or flowering head on them. Beautiful foliage. This one actually happens to have that classic stripe, darker stripe through the, the foliage here. And again, flowering is going to be very profuse, but you do have to clean them, okay? Um, again, these are great, great plants for those sunny areas. Now, the last type that I'm gonna tell you about is 
a really cool kind of breeding cross. And what they've done is they have taken the best traits from your ivy geranium and the best traits from your zonal geranium and they've put them together. So this is what we call a Pelargonium interspecific hybrid, okay? And you're starting to see this in a lot of different plant breeding. And so I'm gonna show you this one. This is actually called, this is one of our more popular uh, species, if you will. It's an interspecific, but it, the variety is called Sarita. And um, Sarita means princess, so it's kind of fun. Um, and what you find with the interspecifics is that they're bushy, they're lush, they're disease resistant. They bloom big, beautiful flowers. They have thicker foliage. They're weather resistant. They are just nonstop out there in the garden. And like I was telling you before, I'm gonna turn this a little bit. They tend to be self-cleaning. So again, when they shed the flowers, these stems will stick up and you, you do want to remove them, but you don't have to remove them right away. So when you get a moment, go out there and remove them. But believe me, this plant will continue blooming on top of these old flower stems, okay? So semi self-cleaning, I would say, with these inner specifics, but really, really beautiful colors again. And you can barely tell, sometimes you can barely tell the difference between this plant and a zonal, but the habit can sort of semi-trail out the sides of the pot. So that's where you get a little bit of that ivy geranium habit. So really, really great plants, really wonderful breeding in the geranium family. So there are a lot to choose from out there. Okay, now another thing that I wanted to mention with geraniums is that you can winter them over, okay? So this is pretty key here. With wintering, you can do it three different ways. You can actually take cuttings from geraniums, okay? So you usually want about a three to four foot, three to four foot, not three to four foot, sorry, three to four inch cutting from a tip, okay? And so what you would do is you would take a cutting and then right, you would cut right below the node. So let's say this is a leaf. I have three inches here of, of tip there's a leaf sticking out, I would cut right below the node here. Then um, with that, you go ahead and you place the cut end in rooting hormone, and then you would go ahead and put it in a pre-moistened vermiculite or seed starting, like really well draining soil, okay? And you would tent it or cover it so the humidity stays in. And about six to eight weeks, bright light conditions as well. And then in about six to eight weeks, you'll start to get rooting. And then you can actually pot those individual cuttings up and then grow your own geraniums, okay? So you can do that towards the end of the season. You can take cuttings, no problem. You can really take cuttings on geraniums all the way through the growing season. So it just depends when you wanna do that. The second way to overwinter them is literally just taking the pot inside, okay? So really after the first fall frost, light frost, no problem. The geranium's starting to kind of yellow a little bit, die back a little bit, no problem. Give it a little bit of a haircut, bring it inside to a bright indirect light area, or if you're getting some sun through the windows, no problem, or underneath artificial lights. That's a really good spot. You want to let them go dry in between waterings, okay, because we don't want to overwater again with this, with this, with these plants, and just use them as house plants, okay? Enjoy them that way. Just keep them on the drier side of watering over winter. No feeding, just let them go. And then right around March, you're probably gonna cut back probably close to half of that plant. Clean it up really, really nice. Start your fertilizer regimen inside, and then you can start taking them outside and kind of acclimating them slowly outdoors again, mid-April, late April, early May. So they're ready to go outside when the weather cooperates and the temperatures are higher than about 45 degrees, okay? So that's another way to do it. The third way to do it is kind of the older way to do it, but it works just as well, is you will actually dig your geraniums out of the soil, okay? Remove the soil as best you can, and then you actually will store them in a cool, dry area 
in a paper bag or in a cardboard box where they just sit there and die back and dry over the winter, okay? And when I say cool, like 60, 65 degrees, somewhere around there, dark, okay? And then let them just dry out naturally. You can check on them every, you know, like maybe once a month over the winter. And then again, around March, you're gonna go ahead, bring them out, clean them up as best you can, repot them in new potting soil and go ahead and keep them in the house for that time. Expose them to bright light conditions or artificial lighting. Go ahead and water the soil substrate. You can start feeding and there you go. You're gonna bring those geraniums back to life. So again, they are a really diverse uh, family of, again, pelargonium or annual geranium. Lots of colors, lots of species to choose from. Just put them out in sun and enjoy.